three, two, one, let's jam. All right, hey, what's going on? Hanzo here at the Hanzo Honey House. We're gonna do something special, at least for me, to present to you on this day of 333 uploads to YouTube. We are cranking out content like crazy. Okay, so I have this thing where I feel like there are certain things in life that get lost time and in turn are ultimately forgotten about. But of course, there are people out there who remember these things and put them back in the spotlight as hmm, small as the spotlight may be at the current time of presentation. It is still something worth noting since we are moving into the days of gigabytes taking up a multitude of space and people have limited options when it comes to data storage and how many games they can have stored on their digital space. So I would like to spotlight five games that, in my opinion, that would probably do great if they were remakes or continuations with a new generation feel from the classic way of which they came. So let's check it out in no particular order. We're going to start off with a game that I feel could be good, albeit I understand that it could be deemed controversial because people view things differently these days. So, first game is a baseball game made by Konami called Cyber Stadium Series Base Wars. Now, as much as they said Cyber Stadium Series, it is quite literally the only baseball game they produced in reference to this series, quote unquote. So, essentially, the storyline, which, how can you have a storyline with a baseball game, apparently, it is the 24th century, and ownership is tired of overpaying players for trash stats. So, think like a guy who's hitting 250, 200, a buck 75, getting paid a gazillion dollars to do virtually nothing. I wonder who actually has that kind of thought process. But in order for them to turn around a quality uh, production on the field, they turn to robots. And they make a baseball team with robots. And so this is the game that was born. So essentially, it is still baseball to the sense of there are walks, there are strikes, four balls to a walk, three strikes to a strikeout, three outs to an inning. But the caveat is, you're playing with super-powered robots. There is four robot types, maybe five. Let's, let's go through the list. We have a cyborg, who's just the standard bipedal, two-legs, uh, two-arm cyborg. You have a tank, who has a tank wheel base. You have a flybot that has like a UFO-style hover uh, look about them. And then you have the motorcycle bot, what is as build the bottom half is a unicycle so yeah i think that's only four yeah yeah four and they make up of various teams um, that you can pick that are predetermined but there are two teams you can edit in terms of the name and the uh you know robot type and if they hit left or right there's no switch hitting in this game um the, the, the cool thing, or at least the controversial thing about this game, is there is no ruling for force outs. How they handle force outs is they let you fight. Now, the fighting is kind of basic at best and could be revamped, I'm sure. But essentially, the defending player who gets the ball is in a position to fight the offensive player on the base path. And so the result would be if the defender wins, the player is out. Now, if the offensive player wins, he is safe and can proceed forward as he fit. Now, there are disadvantages to how close the ball was to the base before you get there as the offender. So you can have lower health than your defender, which may make the fight more challenging as the offensive player. Um, 
Now, you can't fight indefinitely because there's damage ratio by way of a horsepower meter, which ticks down in the fights you get into, the damage you take, and if you get hit by the uh, hit by the pitch. If you lose three players, position players, you forfeit the game and the game is over. Alternatively, if your pitcher, which is probably not a great idea, loses all their horsepower, you forfeit the game because there are no substitutions. So, in my opinion, I feel like this game can go somewhere in terms of production value, update the graphics, give them some bios, maybe make it more like a baseball game in the sense that you expand the field a little bit, fix the camera angles because the camera in some fielding situations is god awful. It's, it's pretty bad. Like, you lose track of the ball because the ball's flying so fast and your defenders are not very quick. And, on top of all that, your defenders are kind of hard to control if they're not already on screen. You don't know who's going to go to get the ball. But yeah, if you update the graphics, maybe update the field a little bit, add more players, add more teams, and give them all kind of like a bio situation, because, you know, obviously manufactured dates are a thing. You know fictitious worlds are a thing and maybe you know expand it a little bit in terms of gameplay maybe add some mini modes training mode for instance you, you could use a training mode in a baseball game they have that all the time but uh, in my opinion I think this will do good in terms of the baseball aspect of it it'll, it'll kind of spice it up a little bit people do get bored with baseball as the real-world baseball trying is trying to uh, change the rules to shorten the game, make it more lively, that kind of thing. And that in itself is controversial on its own. So I think as an outlet, this would be awesome to give people another view of how baseball should be enjoyed. Because you know, I'm a big baseball fan. Love baseball. You've heard me talk about the Oakland Athletics quite a bit in the Major League Baseball scene, which at this point in the game is bittersweet. However, they're still my favorite team and the team I grew up with. So, that again, Cyber Base Wars. And if you want to see a little bit more about this game, maybe we can play it on the channel. All of these games that we're featuring, we can play them on the channel if you're interested in watching, because I'm, I'm one for the people. I, I like to entertain you with the knowledge that I have and hopefully show you something you may or may not know. So let's move on to the next game. All right, for our next game here, we're going to review a game that I still think is good to this day. And I feel like anybody who is a big fan of platformer shooter type games should give it a go, however you can play it. The game is called Bucky O'Hare, and it is based on a captain, a space captain, uh, rabbit for lack of a better word and his crew trying to stop the toads from taking over and ruling the Aniverse. quite literally that is what it is on paper the original game that came out on the nintendo entertainment system or the famicom in japan was a Mega Man clone in the sense that you have platforms, you shoot stuff, and you have special abilities that you can get as you proceed forward. Uh, you start the game as Captain Bucky O'Hare, and you get other crew members to join him as you save them from capture from the Toads. Now, again, since there is like a resurgence of retro things, retro being, this game came out in 92, 1992. We're in 2023 at this point. It's a 30 year old game. I, I mean, considering that the Nintendo was so basic in the sense of what you could and couldn't do with it in terms of hit detection, skill set, ability, presentation, palettes, that kind of thing. You give this an updated coat, right? Everybody looking clean, everybody looking a little saucy. I mean, even if you did it in the way of kind of like the INT Creates Bloodstained series. The game's new, but it looks old. And it plays well. Real smooth, you can change between the characters. Everybody's got their own abilities. Everybody's got their own premise and use. 
and I feel like this game has the same premise. Now, in terms of a package deal this in the, in the more new generation age, you can make it into like an action adventure game, like an open world, possibly Metroidvania game, or in the sense of like just the straight up here's a game, a new game with the other games you can play. Now there was an arcade release that I've never seen in the wild, but I know exists, made by Konami. It, to the vein, it plays a lot like the other Konami beat em ups, but it's more like a shoot 'em up because everybody's got a gun and you have special abilities that you can use, and you have the quintessential Mega Crash bomb that you can do for screen clearing. Um, and you have health meters, and really it's kind of interesting because if you pick up a health item while you are close to having full health it counts as a 1-up. So I think that's a pretty cool touch given the fact that you know everything in terms of how beat-em-ups work there's very minimal life ups, there's very minimal 1-ups in those games because they were meant to get your money. They wanted your quarters. So arcade operators set it so you couldn't have those things or the versions themselves didn't even have that. So considering that Others like, say, Ninja Turtles, for instance, with the Calabunga Collection. I mean, granted, they had more games to present, but it's still something that could be of interest to a newer generation. And on top of all that, arcade games now can be paid, played at home very accurately to the original, um, you know, arcade board. So it's not about a challenge of porting it or like having it so it looks as good as the arcade it literally can be one for one and people will play it if it's available so Bucky O'Hare I think that'd be cool maybe give a little more contrast maybe even talk about the cartoon series there was a cartoon series back in the day along with it came from you know comics and people love comic books I like comic books you like comic books even manga manga's great People love manga. So, Bucky O'Hare on the Nintendo Entertainment System um, is another one of those games you may want to try to play however you can. Also, if you're into the fight cade business, the arcade game is there. Give it a shot. I, I actually, the little bit of this footage that I'm showing right now, it's pretty fun. I'll have to play through it and maybe even make a full video about it. So,. I think that's that for Bucky O'Hare. So let's move on to the next game. All right, so here we go. We got the next game here is called Star Tropics. Now, you can currently play this game if you did buy a Nintendo Mini. It was one of the 30 games that were featured on the console. Fantastic little piece of machinery. I suggest you buy one. They play great. Runs on HDMI. You can capture it pretty well. So, the premise about this game, as most people back in the day considered it a Legend of Zelda clone, given the fact that the dungeons and the startup screen, like you just saw the startup screen there where it's like, register your name for the battery backup save that was in the cart, looks exactly like Legend of Zelda. You play a character named Mike Jones. No, his name is Mike Jones. Like, literally, that's his name. Why do you keep asking who? His name is Mike Jones. So, he's coming to this sea island, which is shaped like a sea. That's why they call it that. To find his uncle, who is also a Jones. His name's Dr. Jones. And the premise on the reason why you defend yourself in this game, Mike was a star pitcher for his team from Seattle, which I'm guessing they mean Seattle, Washington, but back then they just named cities, not states, for it to make more sense for the American audiences. So while it is basic in nature in the sense that, yes, you have to run around and talk to people, hear them out, 
maybe a little bit of fetch quest here and there. You do have a cool premise, and with the second game that came out shortly after this, Zoda's Revenge, uh, Star Tropics 2, no true spoilers in the title of that game, huh? Um, you have a situation where there's time travel involved, and you go to various points in time to fix the mysteries in that game, which is a great game to itself. They definitely stepped up from which Star Tropics came from. And I still thinking it's a fun playthrough. It may not be as cleanly polished as it should be. Going back at it, some of the controls are a little wonky as they're not as truly responsive as they should be. But everybody loves a good RPG, sort of, because it's not like a true RPG where you have a stat page. You have a, these stats, but it's not like you have agility or strength or dexterity. But you do have a world map that you travel. But look at that pixel art here. You heard the no, static <laughs> pixel art. She's talking to you and she's waving her arm because she's a shaman chief. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, give it a paint job kind of give it some background maybe even have like a uh, gallery mode where you can review the storyline from the older games and kind of give it that RPG uh, RPG touch you know defeat enemies gain experience update your strength update your weapons apparently they have put a lot of weapons in here that are quote unquote baseball related Albeit, I don't know how a yo-yo is considered baseball related other than he throws it with his right hand and it has short reach. But, I don't know. I think it'll be kind of cool to have like a, like a prequel situation where you're, you know, you're in school, you have the game on the line, you play the prequel where you're, you know, playing baseball, and then you get the call saying your uncle went missing. And then you come to the sea island and you're just looking around kind of like, oh man, what am I getting myself into? And then everything starts to make sense along the way. Again, Star Trek is, is available right now on the Nintendo Mini consoles or you can get it on the uh, Virtual Console, I believe. It, I, did it, I think it did come out on the Wii. It might be available for the Switch. Or you can play it however you can. You know, emulation is a big deal these days. And it's a way to preserve the old school games, not because we're trying to take anything away from them. But we just want to experience the things that have passed us by. And hardware is not as compatible digitally as the analog stuff. You know, no one's truly have, has an analog TV anymore. So, Star Tropics. Also, there's a second game, Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. Check it out. Alright, so our next game is going to be Shatterhand. Uh, Shatterhan is a game that was uh, published by Jellico here in the United States and Angel in Japan, which is a subsidiary of Bandai Namco. We'll talk about them in a little bit in terms of their contributions to this game. Developed by Natsume um, in both situations. E essentially, you are set in a dystopian future in the year 2030, which we all know was not going to look like this in the year 2030. Uh, this 1991... Uh, side scroll and beat him up you play as a character named steve herman a young officer from the bronx remember i said earlier that they talk cities not states we all know the bronx is in new york new york we know that but apparently they don't want to talk about it so um you lost your arms in a fight with the metal man and in turn after healing from your injuries you have been restored as codename Shatterhand to take them down. Now, the Japanese game, which essentially is the same game, they just changed some of the cosmetics and music and the storyline. Not really like the storyline per se, because the storyline of the Japanese game followed the TV show. The TV show named Super Rescue Soul Brain. And in that game, you would play as the main uh, figure as shown on screen here. Soul Braver. Again, the gameplay is about the same. The robot assistance in terms of you picking up the alpha and beta uh, power-ups are the same. 
It's just that instead of you following a storyline of stopping crime in Tokyo, you are a man with metal arms that can essentially punch... has gigaton punch power to fight all these people off. So, again, we love cyberpunk stuff. We love the dystopian future stuff. And with a fresh coat of paint and a little bit of a remix here and there and a little bit of gallery action, concepts, interviews, that kind of thing, or even just a release of the Japanese game translated for American audiences while we understand Japanese audiences enjoyed the game for what it was worth. Some people, like myself, I didn't really know it existed until I did research for this video that uh, Shatterhand was not just a standalone game, it was a part of something else. Uh, very similar to what we have here, but um, yeah, cool game. We're definitely worthy play. Plays pretty sharp. It feels pretty good, and uh, you should check it out. I don't believe it was on any other. There was really no other releases of this game, so you're gonna have to try to find your way to it, however you can. So let's move on. So uh, for our fifth and final game that we're gonna talk about today is a game that we have played on the channel before, which we'll link the playlist uh, into that series that we played through. We went, uh, we went to a Chasing the Championship with the best team. Tropical Girls, just saying. Super Baseball 2020 or 2020 Super Baseball, however you look at it, was a game that was produced in 1991 by the SNK Corporation where they took one of their other IPs, Baseball Stars Professional, which came out on the Nintendo, pretty straightforward for it, um, and gave it a cybernetic twist. Again, incorporating robots, but also incorporating women as well. So it was a baseball game where men, women, and robots teamed up on a team, and they played baseball. Still, some standard affair is there in the sense that, yes, four balls to a strike, three outs to an inning, three strikes to an out, nine inning game. However, they have modified the play field because, again, this is the future and everybody is powered up. They have their cybernetics about them. <laughs> that they have changed it so you can only hit a home run if the ball is goes to center field as you can see at the top of the screen there it says home run zone quite literally the ball has to hit over the fence or over the wall I should say in that section in order for it to count as a home run everywhere else will actually also mention the foul territory is limited behind first and third base so if the ball lands anywhere else in the play field it's going to bounce back into the play field and be playable as a live ball. Again, standard affair here. Force outs are there. Catches, epic catches can be made. Home run balls can be robbed as they have jump pads. There's also a modifier in late in games where they put landmines on the field, so you have to be really careful with your fielding. Honestly, again, it needs bios. It needs new teams it needs um backgrounds of the characters i don't know that's called bios but again a game that looks great plays well can look even better with the new generation coat and i'm not even getting into the power-ups you make money by getting outs and hits and you can power your player up whether it's pitching armor hitting armor fielding armor or even just putting in a super-powered robot that can do it all. Not my favorite thing to do because robots run on gas in this game and their gas meter is not mentioned on screen. The only indicator you have to know what a robot is g uh, gassed out, they start sparking and then they start flaming and then they explode. And then you are given the most generic, uneventful, unskillful robot in its place. Also, there are injuries in this game. If you get hit with a pitch over, I believe it's 130 miles an hour, your player will be injured. You will, will be awarded $5,000 for having an injured player. 
but you are also getting a junk robot that can't really do anything. So at that point, you'd be better off just buying a robot upgrade for that particular robot. But nonetheless, fun game, looks great, plays great. Uh, it came out on the Super Nintendo Sega Genesis when I was dead broke. Man, I couldn't picture this. Uh, and also, it came out, the arcade perfect release came out on PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. I highly suggest you play it. I highly suggest they should make a new one. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Let me know down in the comments down below if you feel any of these games interest you. If you want to see other playthroughs of them. Or if you have other suggestions of games that I should talk about. Let me know down in the comments. We thank you for watching and until tomorrow or maybe even next week. We'll see you then. You take care and you have a good one.